So now we have some problems that are using indirect measurement. Um, indirect measurement is great because sometimes it's not very easy to get a ladder out and to calculate and measure how long a tree is so or how tall a tree is. So we can use some indirect measurements to actually calculate that information for us. And these are um, some more, um, you know, real life scenarios where you might actually use indirect me measurements. Um, this one's a little difficult to see. You go to the park and use the mirror method to gather enough information. So the mirror method was described on this previous page, right? So this is actually an activity that um, if we weren't a credit recovery class, we would actually go outside and do. But you can just read through on how to how we would do that um, before you do this problem. Um, but you go to the park and you use the mirror method to gather enough information to calculate the height of one of the trees. The figure shows your measurements. Calculate the height of the tree. So this right here is 5.5 and this is 4 and this is 16 and over here is X. Now, when we're using indirect measurement, we are using similar triangles. And if you remember, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So we can set up a proportion. We've got to make sure that we set up the right corresponding sides though. So the height of you, the person, would correspond to the height of the tree. So I'm going to do 5.5 over X. And then this, the your distance from the mirror, corresponds with the tree's distance from the mirror. Now I need to make sure and you keep your information on top or the person's information on top and the tree's information on the bottom. So that's going to equal 4 over 16. Now we cross multiply. We get 4x equals 5.5 times 16. I'm going to stick that in the calculator. Which gives me 88. <clears throat> now when I divide... I get 22. So the tree is 22 feet. That was much simpler than me trying to find a ladder and trying to find a tape measure that would be long enough in order to chew, um, to measure that. Let's look at the next one. Stacy wants to try the mirror method to measure the height of one of her trees. She calculates that the distance between her and the mirror is 3 feet and the distance between the mirror and the tree is 18 feet. Stacy's eye height is 60 inches. Oh, the first thing I see here is we have different units. We have feet and inches. Draw a diagram of this situation and then calculate the height of this tree. So first of all, we're gonna draw Stacy, and, and you don't have to actually draw, you know, a picture of a tree and a picture of a person. We can just draw the two triangles. Obviously the shorter one is Stacy. So Stacy is 60 inches. Let's go ahead and convert that to feet. There are 12 inches in a foot, so we can just divide 60 by 12 and we can find out that Stacy's eye height is five feet. Now it says she is three feet from the mirror and the tree is 18 feet from the mirror. And so I'm looking for the height of the tree. So this is exactly like the one before, we just have different numbers. So I'm going to do five over X equals three over 18. I'm gonna cross multiply. So I get 3x equals 5 times 18, which is 90. And then when I divide, the height of the tree will be 30 feet. Now, when we would do this um, for an assignment or something, you would want to make sure this does not indicate what units they want it in. If they wanted it in inches, we would have to convert this to inches. If they wanted it in feet, we've got it in feet. You just need to make sure and pay attention to those little details. For the practice problem, it doesn't matter. Okay, now we have Stacy again. Stacy notices that another tree casts a shadow and suggests that you could also use shadows to calculate the height of the tree. She lines herself up with the tree's shadow so that the tip of her shadow and the tip of the tree's shadow meet. She then asks you to measure the distance from the tip of the shadow, shadows to her and then measure the distance from her to the tree. Finally, you draw a diagram. Calculate the height of the tree. So this works because again, we have similar triangles. Since this angle is congruent on both of the triangles and we have a right angle, these two triangles will be uh, similar by angle-angle similarity. 
and it looks like this is 5.5, this is 6, and this is 15. These pictures did not come out very well, but that's okay. So Stacy changed her height, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay, so we're going to set up, and, and one of the things I will caution you on is that people, students, get confused when we're dealing with two triangles. So sometimes it's helpful to draw those two triangles separately. So this is 5.5, this is 6, this is x right here, and a lot of students will say this is 15. Well, this is not 15. This is going to be 15 plus 6. So that makes it 21. So make sure you're paying attention to those little details because that will get you the wrong answer if you're not. Now, pretty simple. We set up our proportion. X over 5.5 equals 21 over 6. So we cross multiply. We get 6X equals 5.5 times 21. That gives me 115.5. Now I divide that by 6. And the tree is 19.25 feet tall. 